Hey everyone, this is Fixreef, and today we have this older uh, Hydra 26 light uh, that we're going to try to uh, get working again. This light came in um, with an issue that it's water damaged, so I'm not plugging it in. Uh, I'm just going to take it apart and see what happens. It came in in this uh, shape. You can see that the screws are all missing. I think this one's broken over here. And what is concerning me is that you can see that there is melted corner over here. I'm not sure what's melted, uh, and uh, we're about to find out what it is. Um, my concern is that it's so damaged on the inside that it actually melted the plastic cover. So let's try to uh, carefully take it apart. There is a slightly older model of the light. The newer um, hydras don't open up like this. Um, for example, it's got this uh, ribbon cable here that, that goes into the into the panel, and, and the newer lights don't have that. But off right off the bat, look at all of this. So there is definitely corrosion in this corner and in this corner. There is all this is burned. So there is a um, there's a trace going on around here. Here's the trace. Here's the piece of it sticking out. So that trace burned out. So it's sure that uh, with so much current going through it that it burned through this much copper and melted these corners here. Almost as bad over on this side, although I think it's still melted, but it's not as, as bad as on this side. Yeah, let's see what uh, the board looks like, because with this much damage in these corners, if the board is in the same condition, then... I don't think that this can be easily repairable. I need to carefully separate it, much like with the newer um, hydras. This has many headers that go in, and it's very easy to to damage them and break them off the board, and then it's additional work. Okay, so. Um, yeah, looks like some of this have been um, broken off, but <clears throat> the LED clusters, although clearly partially disconnected, so somebody tried to open them up already before, but the LED clusters seem to be in a very good shape. I'm going to um, put it aside and see if, uh, uh, and see what's going on with the main board. And this is our main board. Um, it's actually not as bad as I was expecting, given the condition on the other side. Again, let me uh, let me just bring you closer so you can see how bad this is. This is completely, completely burned through. Um, I have serious concern about the board in this condition here, because I can replace uh, and repair the trays going around. That's not a problem. But if that damaged the vias that are on this on the actual main board here, and those are no longer conducting, you are not going to have a good board. And about a little bit better condition here, but not not by much. As far as the other side goes, um, there is clearly some corrosion going on. So around the plug, there is a little bit of corrosion going, but that's typical for these lights. They all have a little bit of corrosion because uh, the plug is exposed to the outside air. This is just dirt. Oh yeah, right here. This is bad. This will have to be repaired. Um, and this is bad. This also will have to be repaired. This is this looks really bad. The good news, however, although I don't have a spare board for for uh, for this light, the good news is that. Um, it looks like there are, what, seven channels here. Um, they're all, or most of them are identical, so all of these components and all the circuitry duplicated throughout each channel. So we should be able to just um, look up what those are, find replacements for those, and um, attempt to repair. Well, let's start with this. This is arguably probably the worst condition. Um, there is some burned area. Here as well as um, clearly corrosion. I'm going to go ahead and remove uh, the driver, 
looks like a resistor, looks like a capacitor. At least this three, and see what what the area looks like underneath. Okay, you can see that the area under the controller or the driver and the area under the, um, uh, the, re the resistor are not actually all that bad. But the capacitor, however, is a big, big concern right now. Um, The pads for the resistor are really good. Pads for the uh, driver are also very good, so that's encouraging. Now, what about the capacitor? Because I suspect that there is a short, the short happened somewhere around the capacitor area as well. And the question I have right now is, do we have a, a damage to the board deep enough to cause issues? Okay. That's the extent I'm going to go with trying to clean this up with the soldering iron. I'm afraid that I'm going to damage traces even further. At this point, I'll try to um, remove all of the dirt and flux and all that mess. All right, look at this. <clears throat> I think we have cleaned up the, the area as much as we could, could, at least for now. There's still some questions. But we are in a much better shape. Okay, let's take a look at what's going on around. Oh, yeah. I don't know if you can see this really well. Let me see if I can hold this a little bit but there is a hole in the board there's definitely a hole in the board here and it's not necessarily the capacitor hole but i suspect that this is the driver hole so the capacitor went between this and this um trace over here so to this to this leg of the of the um of the driver between this pin and this uh or between this pad and this pad there was supposed to be a capacitor. That's easy to fix. The pads are, of course, gone, except for maybe this. This looks promising. I see copper. Yay! There's a little bit of copper here. So this, this looks really promising because I can always put a new capacitor in between these two. However, the rest of it is less promising. Let's take a look at this. So this, this is a copper trace which seems to be intact. <clears throat> yeah, this, this one seems to be intact. It comes out here, clearly damaged, and then ends here. Um, then there is this one as well. Also a fairly clean copper trace from this pin of the driver. 
going where exactly? Into the burned board. There was so much current going through this when it shorted that it burned through a significant chunk of this board. Every time there is damage like this to the board, it creates um, extra conductivity, all of these burned parts, and it causes issues. So all of this will have to be removed if we were to fix this. I have no idea yet if this is fixable. Let's take a look at another good example of this and see if we can spot the issue. So here is another channel. And you can see that what's supposed to happen here is that the trace from this pin of the, uh, the driver goes around the capacitor and there is apparently a resistor, R16. That resistor was completely missing from the other uh, channel. And across this resistor, it goes into this pin. So the good news is that we just need to connect these two pins with the resistor. Uh, we'll need to find the right vo value for this resistor to, to, to find this pair. And that's it. And then this capacitor will also have to be installed. Then there is this resistor, which may or may not be good. Um, and of course the driver itself. Now while this is drying, let's focus on the other channel that was significantly damaged as well. Once again, we have a set of um, the LED driver. These are the resistor and the capacitor pair, which is good this time. But uh, this set of resistors and capacitors is bad. This also doesn't look too good with the diode and, and the bigger capacitor. So let's remove this all and clean this up. Okay, now that some of the components have been removed, let's clean up the corrosion. I think there was no short on this area, but um, it's definitely corroded. Okay, and let's get this done. Uh-huh. Okay. I think we got it. All right, now we can actually see the, um, the board. And this side looks really good. Obviously corrosion and stuff, but it's not anywhere near as bad as as the other side. Let's take a look at 
a circuit where this is actually in a better shape and find out what this looks what is supposed to look like so this doesn't look like a, a V at all so that's just the pad that, that got burned off there's a resistor here for which we already have a pad and there is a, there is a capacitor here okay so all we have to do is just repair those two um, areas put new components in here and um, and this side is going to be mostly good now let's flip it over and look at the burned edges so this is the really badly burned edge this is the trace that I was talking about that's um, that's burned off and there is a whole lot of damage to this corner looks like the majority of the actual PCB is gone like I said this all has to be removed even if I have to cut off majority of this corner it's still gonna be better than leaving all of this stuff in there because once it burns it starts conducting and you don't want it to conduct the good news however is that it looks like only the area where the trace that thick copper trace was got damaged I have to assume that this is high current high voltage uh, trace that goes around okay so I tried to uh, clean up the corners they are ugly but um, I think they will work so what happened here as you can see is that all of this got burned out I removed all of the burned out um, PCB parts and really the only trace damage this this one thick trace that was supposed to go around and it can be easily repaired I also removed some of the corroded um, copper over over here and I think that this is ground so so not that big of a deal there is a problem over here a bit because there is there is this trace that got disconnected as well uh, because the PCB is damaged so badly but then again it's just a trace that goes around and can be easily repaired the other corner looks a little better here there is a little bit of burned mark as well which I cleaned out but mostly this is corrosion so for instance copper is missing here copper is missing over here and also there's a little bit of corrosion on the uh, back plate of um, the uh, the ground plate um, but all of this is clearly repairable and this and the good news is that that's the corner where the, the, we have so many traces uh, and I'm glad that none of it got damaged uh, so we don't have to repair all of these traces and this is all of the mess that uh, that had to be pulled off of the board uh, the burned board okay so I cleaned up the board the best I could there are two areas here where we'll need to replace components one is here and the other one is um, over here um, also we'll need to replace some uh, traces over in these two corners where it got um, damaged a little bit so um, take a look at what take a look at what this um, whole area looks like it's not too bad but there are some holes um, this area looks a little bit better but this whole area over here with tiny capacitors and resistors is all gone so that needs to be fixed up all right let's start with the harder one over here um, so the plan is to hopefully be able to connect to this this trace over here then this pad over here seems to be okay this will need to carry some load and so is this looks like everything's looking good okay and other than that um, put some fresh loaded solder on all of the pads okay so that should be good enough and the other area is much smaller however here we have smaller components as well that need to be replaced
Okay, that seems to be good enough for me. All right, let's start with this big guy. Um, I'll need quite a bit of flux. I'm going to start with the driver. Okay, pin number one is this way. Let's put it in. Now things are going to start going, getting much easier because now we have leaded solder everywhere. Alright, this looks real good. Now this should look real good. So for this one, all we need to do is just add the capacitor and the resistor to the right, and then a, another resistor, which is probably the current sensing resistor, to the bottom. And we are going to have a little bit of um, running traces going on here. The last one in that circuit is going to be the resistor. The problem with the resistor is that um, we have a hole instead. So there's supposed to be a trace going around and into the resistor, and then the resistor is going to the third um, pin of the, um, of the controller. Is I'm going to attach the resistor to the, to the trace over on this side. And then just run the pin, run the trace rather the the wire across. and it will connect to the resistor. All right, and now we can cut the wire.
Okay, so that circuit should work. And that's it. Just need to clean it up very carefully because I don't want to damage the um, the wires. And this circuit for this channel should be all done. Hey, this does not look too bad. Now here I'm going to probably get all of the smaller components in place first before I mess with uh, the larger um, diodes. All right, the other side of this resistor will require a trace or will require a wire because there's supposed to be a pad in there with two uh, connections. One go into where I was, uh, where, where I just was able to run some solder, so that one's good, but the other one is supposed to go to pin number two on this side of the, um, on this side of the driver, and it's just not long enough anymore. Yeah, that's the diode, and the last but not least is the capacitor. Capacitor looks rough, but it is actually fun functionally just fine. Okay, and this circuit is also done. A whole lot of cleanup. Okay, that looks that looks fairly good. Okay, so here is the result. Let me make sure that it's focused. We have all of the smaller components in there. All of the small components in there. They all look nice and clean. There is no um, there is no rust anymore. So it's all it all looks good. Okay, so now what is left is to fix this mess. We'll need very, very thick copper wire to run across to connect the two points on this corner and to also connect a few points in this corner. And once we're done with this, looks like there's a little bit more uh, corrosion going on that I need to just clean up. But once we're done with this, this corner is good, but this corner has one trace that broke off as well that needs to be, uh, needs to be connected. Yeah, much better. Okay, let's start connecting the wires.
All right, check out the connections. Check out all of this. So this is looking really good. So there are three uh, wires over here and one wire over here. Um, I'll need to insulate the sole so that it does not touch the ground and doesn't rust for that matter. This and this side will be good. Okay, the mask has cured. So this is all. This is what it looks like. Let me. Yeah, this is what it looks like. It's all sealed. It shouldn't rust anymore. It should be electrically insulated as well. So that all looks good. So the last thing we need to do is just get this one trace repaired. And for this we have a much, much smaller wire to put in. You don't need anything huge as the other one. Okay, so now this board, when plugged in, consumes a small amount of current, which I would expect because the main controller needs to function, um, perhaps even the, um, the Wi-Fi module too, but it does not smoke, it doesn't uh, consume too much power. So I think we should be all good. Now let's go ahead and plug this into the light, into the LEDs themselves, and see if, uh, if they light up. All right, so I partially assembled the light. Um, I found a couple more issues while testing it. Uh, one was that uh, both V's on both ends here, where there was a short and uh, part of the board got damaged, the V's also got damaged on this main uh, rail that goes to, the, to each of the LED channels. So since each of these um, V's didn't conduct, power was not coming towards, uh, towards some of the channels and there was a short. So I had to clean this up and I had to run a jumper wire as well over uh, from the outside over uh, to uh, to this uh, to these parts of the of the LED channels so two of them had to be done a little bit of cleanup here which I will still need to um, conform all code and uh, otherwise the light should now work uh, let's plug it in see if uh, all of that effort resulted in a working light and let's give it some power Okay, the light's not on yet, but I can hear the fan, and it looks like the LED is on. I'll have to find out what red LED means in this particular case. Um, let's take a look at what happens to, to the fan when we turn it on. Let's power cycle again, power on. The LED is working, the fan is working already, so, so that's a very good sign. The fan is working, and it means that um, the main controller is controlling the fan, and... Um, this fan circuit is not damaged, so that gives me a lot of hope. Now, let's switch it over, and let's see if we can make it work off of the reset button. There you go. It's probably the lowest setting. And here is the bright setting, and even more, and even more. And that was probably the highest, and it's off again. So yeah, looks like all of the LEDs are on, so every single channel is working, so that's great. I believe that the light is now fixed. Well, this completes this repair. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe, and I will see you next time.